in our biggest buyers. This is for some this is, there is no B. So whenever you see a, uh, there's no P, there's a B. So wherever you see a B in our big, you know, there probably often was a P. Uh, and that was like, and so Nablus is pretty, it's a new city built on the old city of Shechem by the later inhabitants, by the Romans, Greeks, and others. That's why the, anyway, make a long story short, the Bible documents the return of the Jews from captivity in the 400s, 500s, 400s. The attempts to rebuild the temple, and somehow in the 400s, the temple gets rebuilt. I want to get into all that. That's the second temple. They limp down through to the Maccabean period, which is about the 170s. They're fighting two groups of people, the descendants of Alexander the, the um, Great. One is in Syria. So over here are the Syrians, or what we would call the Seleucids. I don't want to bore you for the name. Over here are the Egyptians, which are both Greek kingdoms now, under the control of Alexander's generals. He divided it up into four generals before he died or they divided it afterwards. That's where you get the book of Daniel, the four winds, the four kingdoms. The four kingdoms are the kingdoms of Alexander's generals after he dies. I can give you the whole book of Daniel in another class. I don't have time in this class, but you know Daniel, I can show you all of what Daniel's talking about. Because he's talking about uh, the he-goat that comes and roars through. That's Alexander the, the Great. He even tells you at one point it's, it's, it is. And all of the division into the four winds of the four kingdoms, that's of the descendants and so on. Anyway, Palestine is under the control for a while of the Ptolemies in Egypt. This would be the 300s and 200s. The Ptolemies, you know, who's the last Ptolemaic ruler? Cleopatra, a time of Julius Caesar. And he takes over that area and becomes a Roman province. And then she has a bad end. And these child wearers, right? And this, at some point, the, these Greek people take over, and that produces the Maccabean uprising, because they're less tolerant than these people. So in around 170 or so BC, you get an uprising against Seleucid Syrian control. That's a Greco-Syrian control. And that's the second independent Jewish kingdom, if you want to call it that, led by the Maccabean family. The Jews commemorate that to this day. What's their commemoration called? Hanukkah. Hanukkah. What does Hanukkah mean? I hope this is useful for you. I think it fills in some pieces maybe. I'll get up to the present, don't worry. What does Hanukkah mean? Like celebration of life? Now that's what the rabbis try to make it out to me. It's nothing to do with that. <laughs> yeah, it has to do with not the, it's the, it's the Greeks that they forced to win. <laughs> the Romans hadn't come yet. Uh, we're in the 200 BC, 150 BC period. The Romans are uh, stretching out of the Eastern Mediterranean in this period, but they're they're, they're allies of the Jews in this period. Actually, Jews. Uh, it's in the Maccabee books if you read it. It's in the Book of Daniel if you read it. You'll see that the Romans uh, defeat the uh, uh, Greco-Phoenician fleet in the Eastern Mediterranean in this period. It's mentioned in the book of Daniel. In any event, Daniel's writing it around this period, the time of the Maccabean uprising, even though it looks like it's, he's trying to make it look like it's a prophecy book, that it's a 5th, 6th century BC, but it's not, it's a 2nd century BC. In any case, that's another class. But a lot of people love Daniel, and that's why I mentioned him. How many of you have read Daniel in this class? Yeah, a lot of people love Daniel. Really interesting literature. The rabbis don't put him under prophets because they don't consider him a prophet. They consider that literature. They're frightened of Daniel. Because Daniel is a new form of uh, writing. It's what we would call apocalyptic. And uh, rabbis don't like it. And therefore they took him out of the prophets. So if you pick up a Christian Bible, you'll find Daniel in the, uh, in the prophets. If you pick up a Jewish Bible, you'll find him in the writings. Uh, so uh, they just don't like Daniel. They got they got it against him for some reason because he, he the spirit of Daniel provoked some of these uprisings and also the messianic movement that ended up in Christianity. Or something. There's a lot going on. There. In any case, Daniel is uh, functioning around the time of this Maccabean uprising. You may have heard of that, but if you haven't, it's led by Judas Maccabee, and that's why the Jews take the temple and it had been you know paganized. It had been in ruins. Uh, Seleucids had decimated it and put a statue of the Olympian Zeus up in there, purified the temple, and that's where Hanukkah gets its name from. 
the rededication. The Jews call it festival of lights because they light uh, candles and stuff, but it's nothing to do with lights. It has to do with re Hanukkah is the rededication of the temple by Judas Maccabee. That's what it is. It's a totally nationalistic festival. Completely. And Jewish independence therefore flourishes. Josephus covers this, you can read it. But this will go down until the coming of the Romans the next century. Now that Rome thing that I told you about covers a lot of this, but it covers a lot of the struggle uh, between Pompey and Caesar. Two Roman generals who are vying for control in the 70s and 60s. And Caesar wins the Civil War. Pompey is killed in Egypt, but that Rome thing has the killing of Pompey, I think, in it. In any case, um, Pompey is a Roman general in the East. Mark Anthony is in his group. And he comes down through their own. Oh, the Romans want booty. That's what they're after. Well, conquest is money to them. They just clean these areas out. When they, just like Britain used to do, a place like India and a place like that. They just clean these places out when they conquer. And that's why they're, you know, they finance their politics back in Rome. Caesar financed his politics from all of the booty he took in Gaul. Then he could give it to the Roman crowd and sort of, you know, be a, uh, a crowd pleaser. Vespasian uh, built the Colosseum from the Jewish temple temple treasure. So for the uh, uh, entertainment of the Roman mob, blood sports for the entertainment of the Roman mob. But the money came from the sacking of Jerusalem, not for Roman taxes. Anyway, um, that's another day, another story. But the point being, those were all interesting points, but the Maccabees survive, and then the Romans are coming down in the 70s from Syria, and Josephus covers all that in his books, which is why he's so interesting. But So we have a pretty detailed account of it all, but two of the Maccabees are, brothers are quarreling with each other, and one will not pay obeisance to the Romans, the other goes over to the Romans, and then he brings in a Roman army, and Herod's father is an Arab Philistine background. Herod's not a Jew. Herod is a Greco-Arab. His father was a priest. His grandfather was a priest of Apollo in Gaza. And uh, he's a, a convert. I don't think he's a convert to Judaism. But the point is his father is an intermediary in the Roman troops and some of the situations, he made himself useful. He was a go-between of some kind. Anyway, the Romans stormed the temple in 63 BC. 